Okay, so once more, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to uh, today's very first uh, lesson. It's a bright and sunny morning. The skies are clear and it looks good from Rongai. I don't know how it looks from your end, but here it's sunny and uh, the mood is good. So I hope you're going to have a wonderful day learning throughout the day. And what we're beginning with this morning is what you call VRP, VRP or Versatile Routing Platform. Now, just as an introduction, uh, we, we have uh, three components, uh, three components of uh, what you call computers. Eh? One of them is called hardware, the hardware, the next one is called the software. Then thirdly, we have um, the user, the user. Now, under software, we have what we call the system software. And we have what we call the application software. Uh, application software. So the system software is, uh, actually used to manage uh, the hardware and the application softwares. On the other hand, the application software is used to, the application software is used to perform specific tasks. Now, one example of what we call the system software is what we call the operating system. Operating system. So generally, uh, all computers will, will have at least these three components and they must have a system software called the operating system. For example, our phones can be running on Android operating system or iOS uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, now, in particular, the operating system that runs on network equipment, uh, network equipment OS is commonly referred to as the network operating system or NOS, the network operating system or NOS. And in particular, the one that runs the Huawei uh, network equipment is called the versatile, the versatile routing, sorry, platform, the versatile routing platform, commonly referred to as just VRP. So in this particular topic, we are going to have to understand the basics of the Huawei network operating system, versatile routing, routing platform. Uh, and uh, in the following topics, we are going to understand more and more operations uh, and features of VRP. So let's begin. So as more and more end stations in the form of host devices, networkable printers and other similar products are introduced into the local area network, an increase in the density of devices results in a limitation in terms of port interfaces, along with problems of collisions within any shared network topology. So switching has evolved as the means for supporting this growth switching, the introduction of a switch uh, helps to, uh, to reduce what we call the collision domain in a shared network. Uh, in order to, in order to uh, uh, ensure that we can, the local area network can be able to grow in terms of the number of VEN devices and so on and so forth. So VRP, is used within Huawei products as a means to configure and, uh, and operate such managed 
devices. Uh, so network devices that come with VRP and they can be configured and monitored are called managed devices. So for which familiarity together with hands-on skills must be developed. So by the end of this chapter, by the end of this chapter, you should be able to, uh, Kenneth, help us to be read. able to explain yes. the, role, the role switches play in the Ethernet networks, mm. describe the difference between collision and broadcast domains, yes. and explain the general operation of VRP in Huawei products. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Loud and clear. Mm. Okay, so, so far, uh, uh, before we have uh, the switch, so far we've been, uh, we've been having this kind of network. We've been having this kind of network, eh? Where we have a common shared medium and uh, all these end devices have been connected to that shared medium. Uh, and this kind uh, of network uh, is commonly referred to as a contentious, a contentious network. Uh, a contentious network because we have the potential of collision occurring. Why do we have a potential for collision occurring? Because we are using a shared medium to communicate. And in order to reduce, uh, 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 in order to reduce the probability of collision occurring, we use a technology called CSMA, carrier sense multi-access with collision detection. Now, these kind of networks have several limitations. Number one being, uh, they do not scale well. Uh, so they do not scale well. Eh? So why? Because uh, the, more, the more you add devices on this network, then the more you're increasing the probability of collision. And the more devices will have to wait before they send a packet. Uh, so that's one of the that's one of the uh, problems with a shared uh, uh, medium. Then number two, you also increase the potential. You increase the potential. Uh, you increase the potential for collisions. When you add more devices, then you you increase. Uh, the potential for collision. So that's the main problems with this kind of uh, network. Mm. So in order to be able uh, to create what we call multiple collision domains, because as it is with this kind of topology, uh, which is called the bus topology, we have a single collision domain. So here is a single collision domain and we, we collision can occur anywhere within uh, that particular uh, area that I've just highlighted there. So it's a single collision domain. So generally, we have uh, what we call there two devices which were introduced uh, in our network in order uh, to break down what we call the shared collision domain into multiple collision domains. That particular device is called a switch. It's called a switch. Now, uh, there's a video that I'm going to show you uh, so that you can get to know and understand that uh, these network equipment, but generally we have uh, a network equipment which is called a hub uh, or a bridge. Then we have a switch and we have, uh, we have uh, a switch, a hub, and we have a router. Now, generally, uh, sorry, 
Generally, hubs and bridges are called layer one devices. That is, they operate at the at the, the at the physical layer. Because if you look at the arrangement of a hub or a bridge, it offers this kind of topology, a bus topology. On the other hand, we have the switch, which uses the MAC address to forward data. And it's rarely referred to as a layer two device. On the other hand, we have the router, which uses IP addresses. Uh, to forward data and therefore is called a layer three device. However, we still have switches that can also forward data uh, using IP addresses and therefore switches might, might either be layer two or layer three. Mm. So that is important uh, to, to, to remember. Number one, uh, the switch actually evolved from the bridge or the hub. Now the switch uses actually a start topology uh, rather than this kind of topology and forwards data using the MAC address. Now, the other thing to note is that uh, you remember when we were talking about the ethernet, when we were talking about the ethernet, we talked of uh, I think it was, uh, uh, was it 10 base T, 10 base T, and we also talked of uh, 100 uh, base T. hundred base T. Now, uh, while this one had two pairs of wires, this one here had uh, four pairs, eh? four pairs of wires. So the kind of ethernet and contentious network that we've been looking at so far, we've assumed that they have been using what we call the 10 base T medium. With 10 base T, you have two pairs and both of them can forward and receive data uh, simultaneously. Uh, so, we have the probability of collision occurring. On the other hand, nowadays, in order to improve the efficiency of networks, most of the time we use the 10 base T, 100 base T, which has four pairs. So some two pairs are used for sending and the others are used for receiving. And the other two are used for receiving data. And therefore, you cannot have a collision you cannot have a collision. I'm getting notifications that my internet connection is unstable. In case you lose me, uh, you can always let me know by calling my number so that I don't keep on talking to myself. Uh, so in... in well, you went silent for some time, for some seconds. Eh? Oh, okay, okay. In, in case I just go, just let me know, let me know. Okay. So sometimes uh, uh, we, we, we use this kind of uh, media, sometimes we, we use this kind of media. But generally, uh, a switch is thought of breaking down this kind of a single collision domain into multiple collision domains. So here, we only have the probability of a collision occurring between the switch interface and the device. That is when we are using 10 base T that can send and receive eh, using the same lines. So again, this is another collision domain. This is another collision domain. This is another collision domain. And a collision domain really is uh, a, 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 a place in the network where we have the potential of collision occurring. And because we are using the same wire pairs to send and receive data. So you see, by breaking it into multiple collision domains, like here now we have five collision domains, we, we reduce, we highly reduce the potential of collision occurring. Are you seeing that? And therefore, our network can grow. Switches come with multiple interfaces or ports. As I said, we can have 12 port switches, we can have 
24 port or 48 ports. And therefore, we can interconnect 48 computers in this switch and 48 computers in this switch. And each point to point link between the host and the switch will be its own collision domain. Yeah. And therefore, uh, our network can be able to scale well and the potential for collision occurring will be put still at minimum because the collision can only occur between that point to point link. So I hope that is clear and that is why the switches were introduced in our network. Now, the other device that was introduced in our network in order to allow scalability and access to the public network is what we call uh, the router, the router, the router. The router is synonymously uh, referred to as the gateway. Yeah. And the gateway is used to generate, uh, sorry, is used to generate multiple broadcast domains. So you need to understand what a broadcast domain is. Mm. Now, generally, when host A, when host A wants to send a packet to host B, the first thing host A will have to do is to check in its ARP cache table. Do I have the MAC address of host B? If not, host A is going to generate a broadcast ARP request packet. This broadcast ARP packet is going to be forwarded to uh, uh, to all the devices that have been connected to the switch. So this broadcast packet. Mm. So it's going to be sent through all the other ports of the switch other than the port from which it was, it was received. So now uh, all the other hosts, of course, they are going to check the destination IP address in the ARP header. And in particular, this guy here, host B, is going to process that particular ARP request and reply as a unicast. We know that the ARP uh, reply is a unicast. But now, what you need to understand here is that for a router, a router will never forward a broadcast packet beyond the network from which it was generated. So the, the browser, once it receives a broadcast packet, it simply discards it. Uh. So really, the router acts as the edge of the broadcast domain uh, and will restrict the forwarding of any broadcast traffic beyond that interface on which the broadcast was received. So generally, a router is used to break a single network into multiple networks. Why? In order to also reduce the number of devices that are in a particular network, so as to reduce the number of broadcasts. Because as I said again, anytime we need to communicate, we need to begin by doing an ARP cache uh, table lookup then if we don't have that uh, association, we do a broadcast packet in form of an ARP request packet. Mm. So what's the problem with so many broadcast packets within your network? Uh, they cause congestion. So that's why sometimes you might need to break up a large network into multiple subnetworks in order to be able to reduce the number of broadcast packets that are generated within that local area network. So sometimes the router is used for that particular purpose. The other thing the router is used to do most of the time is to uh, connect you to your internet service provider. So most of the time, for example, at MMU, we have a router that is interconnecting us to uh, our internet service provider who is Kennet. Then Kennet now uh, is the one that is interconnecting with other ISPs and internet exchange points in order to form what we call the internet. 
So other than breaking down your network into different subnetworks, it will also be able to interconnect you to the internet. The other thing you need to know about routers is most of the time, routers have fewer interfaces compared to switches. Uh, sometimes just four or five interfaces. So that's one of the distinct features between uh, routers and switches. Again, switches are layer two devices, routers are layer three devices because routers forward using IP address, switches forward using MAC addresses, as we are going to see. We're going to learn more about how the switch forwards data in a coming topic. Okay. So the versatile routing platform, the versatile routing platform, as I said, is the NOS network operating system for Huawei devices. Huawei devices can range from switching devices, security devices, UTM devices, wireless LAN devices, and wide area one devices, unified management systems, uh, and routers. So all these run on VV, VRP, versatile routing platform. Therefore, it's important to understand how, uh, uh, how to interact uh, with the uh, VRP. And in particular, VRP is used for configuration, management, and uh, so some of the things VV, VRP is used to do is configuration. So when you want to configure the device, number two, management, and also monitoring, monitoring of these devices. Mm. So these are some of the things that you'll be able to do using VVRP on this particular network equipment. Now, just like many other operating systems, v, uh, VRP has also evolved into different versions. Uh, the very first version was released and was active, was released in 1998, and its support ended in 2001. Uh, so by support ending, it means uh, we, we are shifting to a totally different version and we are not going to do security patches and any other uh, patch updates. Patch updates is updating a, a part a part of it. So the support ended uh, there. Then we had uh, VRP2, uh, VRP3, and currently the active versions of uh, VRP which are being supported is VRP5 and VRP8. So VRP5 was launched in 2000, VRP9 was launched in 2000, VRP8 was launched in 2009. Mm. This is a very common question again, also in the exam. Sometimes they just ask you questions uh, that are meant to, to, to confuse you and kick you out of balance. Uh, so they may tell you which, which, which VRP, uh, which VRP versions uh, have we had? Then they'll put one, three, four, five, six, eight. So you'll have to choose multiple. So as you can see, we don't have version four, we don't have version six, we don't have version seven. We have one, two, three, five, eight. So it's important that you understand that. And uh, the good thing with v VRP is that uh, in most of your devices, you can be able to upgrade from one version to, to another. So you can, you can always be able to, to update and we're going to see how you can be able to do that again in a coming topic. When, when we are updating the operating system, most of the time we're just increasing the features in terms of processing speed, security, and, and some, some other, many other, many other, uh, problems that are identified with previous versions are also fixed. So that's why it's, it's, it's always recommended that you use a more current version because it caters for many, many other uh, problems. 
Okay. So how do we connect to a router or a switch? Now, to begin with, uh, when it comes to routers, one of the common routers with Huawei are referred to as the AR series enterprise routers. Then when it comes to the switch, we talk of the S7 uh, series, Ethernet, Ethernet switch, Ethernet switch. So in this particular example, we can see that we have a router called the AR2200 router. We have a switch called the S5700 switch. One easy way to differentiate between a switch and a router is the number of ports. For example, I think this is a 24 port switch and you can see that a router has just a few number, a few number of ports or interfaces. Now, in particular, uh, during the initial configuration of a router or a switch, you might need to interconnect uh, this particular switch or router with your device, with your computer. That computer most of the time is referred to as an NMS, a network management system. Now, with Huawei routers, especially the AR2200 uh, and other AR series routers, you can do that using a mini USB port or using what you call the console port. The console port is actually uh, an RJ45 kind of port, while the mini USB is a type, uh, type 3 mini USB port. Mm. With the S5700 switch, it does not have the mini USB, but you have to do it using the console port. So when you're using the console port, then you use what you call a console cable, which you're going to see. When you're using the mini USB port, then you need to uh, uh, interconnect it with a USB cable, as we are going to see in the coming slide. So here, we want to uh, interconnect to this particular router using the console cable. So the console cable is used to either debug or maintain a locally established device, such as a router or a switch. And most of the time, you only interconnect uh, this directly during the initial configuration of your router or switch. Otherwise, after you've deployed it, after you've commissioned your router to the live network, you should be able to access it from your network management system via what we call Telnet. You can be able now to manage it remotely. But for the initial configuration, you'll have to interconnect using the console port. So the console port on the router, as I've said, is simply an RJ45, uh, an RJ45 port. And uh, on the other side of the console cable, uh, it offers actually a serial, a serial port, in particular RS, uh, I think 232, recommended standard RS 232. And uh, for this side of the console cable, on the router, it gives you an RJ45, an RJ45 uh, port. So, a physical connection is established between the serial communication port and the console interface of the router or switch. So most of the time, when you're going to purchase your network management device, these are some of the things you should consider. Does it have a serial uh, communication port? Uh, luckily, uh, uh, most Huawei routers and switches now also have a USB port as I've mentioned in the previous slide. Now, in order for you to be able to connect your device to a console, you need what you call, you need what you call a hyperterminal application, sorry. Ah, you need what you call a terminal, 
emulation, a terminal emulation program. For example, Windows gives us a terminal emulation program called Hyperterminal. Hyperterminal. The Hyperterminal. And now, this particular application, uh, you, you'll need to do some, some port settings in order now for you to be able to uh, to interconnect between your network management device and that particular uh, device which you want to configure. And again, this is a common uh, question. This is a common question in the exam. So these are some of the parameters that need to be set. For example, bits per second. As you can see here, it's 9,600. Uh, so these are the defaults. Data bits, uh, it is eight. The parity is none. The stop bits is one. So you really don't need to uh, to get to, to know the details of what these things mean, but you need to know the, the default values. Flow control is none. So in case they were changed, you can always hit on this button, restore defaults to get back to the default. But please be aware, be aware of these default values for the terminal emulation program in Windows called Hyper Terminal. Now, once you, you, you're done setting these particular values and you click on OK, then it's going to provide you with the command line interface of your router or your switch. Uh, and if it's the very first time you are doing this, uh, then the router will have what we call the factory default settings. And the first thing it will ask you to do is to set up a password. So this password will now be used for future connections. So you'll have to enter a password, then you confirm it. And now for future connections via the console cable, you'll need to provide that password. It will ask you for the password. Okay. So you can also use a USB. So with, uh, with the USB, the router provides a mini USB interface, the, a type 3. Uh, mini USB, a uh, type B actually, type B mini USB, while this one is just a normal USB cable, a normal USB uh, port. So of course most laptops will will come with uh, a USB port, that but they may not come with a serial interface, a serial communication interface, like desktops. Desktop machines come with them, uh, but. Uh, most laptops do not have a, a, a serial uh, interface, but we also have a, a converter. Yes, Nick? Go ahead, Nick. Did you raise your hand, Nick? Okay. Yeah, hello. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm asking. Uh -huh. Uh, let's say I'm configuring a router, then I configure the console port. Yes. But the next time I'm trying to configure to reconfigure the router or just to enter into the router, uh -huh. I, I use a USB cable. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Will, it, will it request for the, for the password uh, or, or I'll just be able to, to get in without asking for the password of the console? No, it will ask for the password because the password now will reside on the switch or the router's board. Eh? And therefore now you already configured it and therefore you'll still have to provide it because it will be saved in your machine. But what I'm asking, mm. like when I'm configuring, I yes. just configured the, the console port, but not the USB port. I'm all of the uh, inter interconnected. Okay, let me just, uh, you see, this particular interface, this particular interface that you have here eh, is what you call the VRP. So this is yes. the command line interface of the VRP. Eh? Yes. So this password, this password that you've set here is what will give you this particular view, which you call the user view in the VRP. So okay. it's like the login, the, the login password. Okay. Uh, so yeah. it is saved in the operating system of the router. 
and now can be i think it can also be used for the usb okay i understand yeah. okay and uh okay i think that is it so yeah, sure. I, I was mentioning about uh, a converter so in case your network management system does not have uh, an rs232 interface we have uh, an rs232 to usb converter which you can which you can always buy uh, in order to uh, to cater for that okay so unlike with the console port which you can just plug and and use with the mini usb you need to install a driver you need to install a driver uh, a driver is simply a system software that enables uh, that particular hardware to be to be used and recognized by the operating system so you have to download that from the Huawei device you can read the notes that are below this slide in order to understand how that is done so by the time these notes were being written this particular mini usb driver was only being supported on windows xp windows vista and windows 10 uh, uh, windows 7 actually so these are quite old operating systems. I don't know whether they have updated that so far, but I think they, sh they, they must have. But just remember that for you to use the USB cable and the mini USB port, you need to install a driver. Again, just as the console port, um, when you're using the mini USB, you still have to uh, use the terminal emulation software and you must also configure uh, these particular basic parameters, like the bits per second, the data bits, and so on and so forth. Again, just like the, just like when you're connecting to uh, using the console, uh, the VRP. If you're doing it for the first time, the VRP will ask you to set up a password. Okay, so that is it about this particular chapter. I can now choose uh, Bethwell. Bethwell, you can help us with the first question, then Cynthia with the next one. Go ahead, Bethwell. When Ethernet broadcasts, uh, broadcast occurs, such as in the case of uh, ARP, uh -huh. which the destination is local, what will be what, what will the response of the gateway be? Yes. So what will the router do with a broadcast packet? Okay, it will discard. Exactly, that is it. Cynthia, thank you, Bethel. Uh, which versions of VRP are currently supported by Huawei products? Mm -hmm. uh, VRP 5 and 8. Exactly, VRP 5 and 8. Thank you very much. Okay, so that is it.